previous videos, we talked about clause 26. It is about the determinations of own employment by the contractor. This happens when the employer is default. That means the employer does not carry out his obligations under the contract. As the employer fails to carry out his obligations, this may lead to the trouble or problems to the contractor in carrying out his duty. With that, the contractor can choose to withdraw himself from the project. This is of course on basis of the cases that the employer actually defaults. That is a procedure for this determination of the own employment by the contractor as well as the things to be done by the employer and the contractor after the determinations. There will also be a joint inspection to record the extent of the work executed as well as the materials and goods delivered to the site. After that, the contractor will need to come up with the final account. This may result in the situations whether there are dispute or without dispute from the employer side. The response in different cases, dispute or without dispute, differs. To better imagine the entire process here, we can use this floor chart. This represents a typical timeline from the date of commencement to the date of completions. If everything goes smoothly, the employer has no default, then the work can be carried out smoothly and the work is completed on time. Now that everyone is happy, the employer get what he wants and the contractor acquire his earning. In the case that the employer default, which can be any of the list here, or if the employer files a bankruptcy, then the determinations of own employment by the contractor shall trigger. If the employer files a bankruptcy, the employment of the contractor shall automatically be determined. Now it is the determinations of the own employment by the contractor when the employer is default. With that, the contractor will need to send the first written notice to the employer, delivered by hand or by registered post, and clearly specify the default. This shall serve as a warning to the employer to see the response of the employer whether to rectify the situations. Now, if the employer is eager to rectify it, the employer is no longer default and cooperate well with the contractor, things shall go back to the normal, the work by the contractor shall proceed until practical completion of the work. Now, if the employer still remain default, the duration given here is 14 days. Within these 14 days, if the employer still remain default, the determinations of the contractor can be happening. Before that, there should be a second written notice. This should be given within 10 days before the expiry of these 14 days. And after the second notice, if the employer still remain default, the employment of the contractors can be determined. Now, within 14 days, the contractors will need to return the possession of the site to the employer, as well as remove his belongings. The removal of the belongings of the contractors will need to have written agreement by the architect. This is to prevent the contractor from removing the item who is supposed to be on site. Next, within 28 days, the employer will need to return the performance bond to the contractor and pay the contractor the total value of the wood which has been properly executed 
and the value of the materials and goods which has been supplied as well as any losses or expenses suffered by the contractor due to these determinations as the default is due to the employer whichever losses and expenses suffered by the contractor shall be imposed onto the employer and then within 28 days the contractor should call for record there should be a joint inspection with the architect and quantity surveyors the purpose here is to determine the extent of the work that has been executed as well as the materials and goods delivered to the site. Once this is done, the contractor will have to compile the record, come up with the final account within six months of the determinations of the employment. In this case, the contractor do not need to wait until the completion of the work to have the amount settled. This is different from clause 25 that before the completion of the work no payment should be made by the employer to the contractor. Under clause 25 when the contractor is at fault the employer will need to hire somebody else to proceed with the work until the completion of the work then the relevant amount is being settled between the contractors and the employer. However, in clause 26, when the employer is at default, the contractor do not need to wait until the employer complete the work, hiring somebody else to have the account settled. Then this final account will be disclosed to the employer architect and quantity surveyor. Now it will be up to the response of the employer. Whether employer would like to trigger a dispute or not to trigger dispute. If the employer agree with the final account produced by the contractor, that means there is no dispute. And if the employer remains silent for 3 months, the final account is considered conclusive. It is deemed agreed by the employer and with that, the final figure shall be settled. It is either the final account is greater than the sum paid to the contractor or it is less than the sum paid to the contractor. Now, if the final account is more than the sum paid to the contractor, that means the employer still owe money to the contractor. With that, the employer will need to pay to the contractor the balance. Now, if the final account is less than the sum paid to the contractor, the contractor will have to pay back to the employer or the employer can recover the sum from the performance bond. Let's say there is a dispute between the employer and the contractor regarding the final account the employer will need to send a written notice to the contractor, provide sufficient particular to justify the dispute. Now it will be up to the contractor to determine whether to amend the initial final account. If the contractor feels the claim by the employer is unreasonable, the contractor may choose to remain the final account which was initially given. Or if the contractor feels he can compromise on certain things, then the final account may be amended. Regardless what is the outcome of this final account, this will be the final versions of the final account. Based on this final versions of the final account, it will be up to the employer whether to continue the dispute. If both parties agree with this finalized final account, this shall bring to this process. It is either the employer pay to the contractor or the contractor pay to the employer. Now, if any parties here disagree with the final account, 
the disputing party may bring to the arbitrations. This shall be carried out within three months of the finalized final account. What you see here, the process for the defaults of the employer, or more specifically, referring to the employer who would like to withdraw himself from the project, which in the case that the employer is default. The process here seems to be quite identical to the clause 25 that we have discussed in our previous videos. There is quite a number of areas will be different from the clause 25. The reason here is due to who is the cause of the problem. If the cause of the problem is due to the contractor, then the employer side will need to take initiative. This includes sending the written notice about the intentions to terminate the employment, taking initiative to call for record, conduct a joint inspection with the architect, as well as finalizing the final account. Now, if the employer is the cause of the problem, the initiative should be taken by the contractor. This includes sending written notice to the employer regarding the determinations of its own employment, taking initiative to call for the records and trigger the joint inspections with the architect and quantity surveyor, as well as taking initiative to finalize the final account. The process here should be made systematic and transparent to both sides. It is so that both sides is aware of their rights. The rationale behind the PEN contract here is, even though the employer is default in the first place, whichever portion should be given to the employer should also be protected. Same goes to when the default is due to the contractor. Whatever is supposed to be entitled to the contractor shall be fairly given to the contractor. The PEN contracts also allow the rooms for the arguments for both parties to resolve the dispute among themselves first. And if this dispute cannot be resolved, this will be brought to the next level, which is the arbitrations. By then, it will involve the third parties to resolve this dispute. As monetary issue here can be quite sensitive, both sides would like to protect their best interests by all means. If no side willing to compromise, this shall require the external parties which are professionals to decide the final figures entitled to who. As you go through this entire process here, I believe you will have better imaginations in terms of the process involved, especially when you find confusing going through the lengthy text, complex sentences, try to understand the head and tails.